All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Sandy Nath, who is actually in Caribbean coast, Mexico right now. And uh, how are you doing, Sandy? And Sandeep is an IIT, IIM alumnus and founded and ran a successful strategy consulting company before, wait for this, before heading to the Himalayas in search of the purpose of life and what drives our energetic consciousness. Uh, as a coach, he has taken the sacred wisdom of our inner power to more than 46 country, cities across four continents, an international Reiki master, business Qigong guide, mindfulness coach, and author of four books. Sandeep is an expert on stress management and applying ancient oriental wisdom to mon modern business challenges. Also on the executive boards of Global Youth Mental Health Awareness, Inc. Australia and PSA India. And what we're going to talk about today is, is stress. Uh, and uh, and Sandeep, you look like you're in a beautiful place where you wouldn't have any stress anyway. <laughs> but let's talk about stress because I, I always feel like that for some reason, you know, in, in, in our lives and in the West, where we kind of have elevated and celebrated stress, right? It's almost like a badge of honor at times. Uh, but what does that, what, is, what does stress really do to us in the long term? Right. I, I find it very interesting that you use the phrase badge of honor because that is where the problem sort of started. We started uh, believing because we were told so that unless we're stressed we're not performing and performance is the watchword of the corporate world and so we wanted to be stressed so that we could convince ourselves and our bosses and our peers that we are high performance individuals but what is stress stress the classical definition is when the demands imposed upon you exceed your resources which means you are clouded by more than you can handle. Now that used to happen uh, once a week, once in 10 days, maybe when we were cavemen, uh, when the elephant suddenly came in front of the cave and we didn't know how to, you know, the fight or flight thing and all of that. But now it's not happening once in 10 days, it's happening once or maybe 10 times in every second. We are talking nanoseconds. Yeah, we're talking about getting stressed with video games. We're talking about getting stressed on the roads, those elephants have converted themselves into trucks and into bosses and into clients and into ideas. And we, we are stressed just when somebody says something to us because it's a little more than what we have programmed ourselves to handle. So if we go with this, and this is not my definition, this comes from stress.org, which is uh, America's veritable uh, institution studying the subject and documenting it. And all we have to understand is that there are two solutions in the definition itself. One is we increase our inner power. So this, we, you know, it doesn't cast a shadow on us anymore. We are more powerful yeah. than it. And the other is that we network. We create communities, which is why the best thing to do about stress is to uh, spend time with friends. And that's what we did. That's how villages were formed. We moved away from our caves and fenced ourselves, put ourselves together, so now the elephant was smaller. And if we just go back to basics, we will be in a stress-free world, much like this Caribbean island, which I'm part of right now. <laughs> yeah, so what's, what's, really what's really interesting about that, uh, uh, Sandeep, is, uh, as you said, I mean, we're overloading ourselves because we're, like, stressed nonstop. But um, like I said, I mean, we've, we've, kind of created a, we've kind of created a culture. If you saw somebody at work who looked completely stress-free you'd be like what's going on here like and so i guess we have to reorient our thinking a little bit to realize that that stress-free person is probably way more productive than that really stressed person over there but normally we would say oh that person is really you know working their whatever off and this person is not way too calm right absolutely and that is something that i'm standing for right now with um with you that when was the last time that any of uh, you you meaning the listeners the viewers yeah. when was the last time you and your organization measured productivity 
and uh, mapped productivity with the state of wellness. I'm working on mm. a wellness productivity alignment uh, survey, which is going to be a report, probably the first of its kind in the world. And I'm looking at organizations which would like to be part of this so that we are able to have empirical data from your organizations about mm. higher productivity uh, with less stressed people. And once we once we, once the data starts talking, you know, data is a religion, and it's going to be, it's yeah. going to continue to be in the century. So all we need are the data points, which we don't have metrics for. We are not measuring yet. We just we just thinking that uh, you know that's a conditioning that if if you uh, if you have the grumpy face and uh, that arrogant look, then you have authority. But that's yeah. not true in a in a more evolved workspace in a renewed workspace, in a workspace where um, you're driven by energy, by, by what's called workplace spirituality. And spirituality not to do with any religion. It's just, the, you know, you are the body, the mind, and the spirit. We understand body. We work like dogs or horses or mm -hmm. mules or whatever. But we understand the mind a little. And that, that's the problem. The mind is a lot more powerful than the body. We understand spirit the least. And in fact, we relegate it into the department of spiritual and religious and all that. No, that's energy. That's what drives us. That's what makes me believe that, John, you're a great guy to be talking to. We haven't met in the virtual mm -hmm. world. Uh, energies play a very important role because we don't meet forever. Right. But we trust. We know uh, that we, we are going to have a productive conversation. We're going to have a productive negotiation. We can we can drive those negotiations. And we, we, we think of all these uh, new fancy concepts of emotional intelligence and all of that. All of that is just energy. Mm. In fact, emotion is energy in motion. Mm. And if you know how to control that energy, you, you have your workspace spirituality evolved. You are a renewed organization. Mm. Your productivity goes through the roof. So, so how do you how do you help people tap into this? Because as you said, I mean, you know, body we understand we're always like, you know, well, we got to get our bodies healthy, we got to do this, got to do that. Mind, I feel like we're only starting to address now about getting our mind, you know, mind and body in sync and getting my, our minds healthy. But as you say, the spirituality bit, most people would relegate. I say that's religious or that's a bit. You know, that's a bit hippie for me. Uh, so how do you help people understand what spirituality, what you just described, what it really means and how you can tap into it? Thanks for that question, John. I um, will have to take our viewers back about 15 years when I was best. I was uh, running this brand consulting company, as you introduced. And uh, mm -hmm. that that was the watchword. And, you know, there were, there, were, there were these management gurus who used to talk about it that, if you if you are a horse, then you would, you know, stress is what drives you, and those kind of examples. Otherwise, you're a donkey who's no stress, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to be a donkey, right? But that that all changed when I went to the Himalayas because that, that's the time when I started searching for answers to this problem, which, as Einstein observed, you cannot find the solution at the same level as what created the problem. So you got to go another level up, which is why you have a body problem. The mind has a solution. You have a mind problem. We don't have any solutions except if we tap into energy. And who knows about energy? Well, the Vedic gurus know about it. The Tibetan lamas know a lot about it. The, the Taoist masters know. The Zen monks know. And that's where I found answers. And why I had to take you back 15 years is because I was searching for those mm -hmm. answers because I didn't want to be part of the problem myself which I found I was being. Now I have solutions by way of what we call renewal habits, because the process of change is within us. All we have to know is what to change, how to change, and why to change, most importantly. And that's the process of renewal, which can be, uh, which you know, which is uh, uh, all part of the book renewal that I've written, and is something that uh, took 15 years, let's say, to write. Because I was wondering, mm -hmm. how are we going to crack this problem? And the problem is cracked by being the change we want to see in the world. So mm -hmm. if we change our habits, we change our perspective, we change things around us, we change the company we keep. Right at the beginning, we're talking about you know, forming friends, forming villages. 
when we have a stress-free community, that's when uh, it becomes acceptable. Now, nobody in my environment over here is uh, bothered that you know they've got those deadlines or they've got those problems because I have a deadline with you. Here we are, we have to have this interview. But here I am in an environment in a fairly good uh, connectivity and we had a little audio problem to start off. Here we are. Nothing that stresses you out. Oh, but it could. Yeah. So we want to form those communities within organizations who adopt the renewal habits. And once you have the habit, it stays with you for life. So you get stress-free forever. Uh, so when you when you um, when you did go to the Himalayas, what was what was something? What was the first thing that really surprised you as you went on your quest for for wisdom? What was the first thing that you went? Wow, I've just been approaching this completely from the wrong direction. I did not go on a quest for wisdom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went. I went. Uh, you know, you, like they say, you either go towards a dream or away from a fear. So I was running away from my fears. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I bumped into, I bumped into the solutions that have worked for us for five thousand years. And then mm -hmm. I started learning them, and then I started teaching them. And that's what's taken me over to four continents, doing workshops with energy, with practices like Qi Gong. So, uh, Qigong, Reiki, energy practices, which are transmittable. And uh, that, that's what makes it so powerful because people can do these things and experience them for themselves. And when, when they, once they do that, then there's no going back. You don't, need, you don't need proof because you have the experience of it. You don't need somebody else mm -hmm. uh, measuring it somehow and telling you that, yes, this is okay. Because for energy, those uh, measuring systems haven't been developed yet. About 500 years ago, the measuring systems for saying that the, uh, the Earth was round had not been developed. So the Earth was flat, and that was fine. And now we don't call that science, but that was, that was cutting edge in those days. If you knew how to prove it's flat, you, you were a scientific genius. But now, uh, you know, when you measure things differently, you know that they work differently. But the best thing is your own experience. So as a Qigong practitioner and coach, as uh, somebody who could be uh, just intrigued by this word, which starts with a Q, by the way, Q-I-G-O-N-G. -G. Yeah. Google it up and, and look at what we have known for so many thousands of years. That's what surprised me. Why is this not known to more people in so many years? And so that's kind mm -hmm. of uh, where the journey started in 2010, making it available for as many people as possible and then making habits out of it. Yeah. But that's uh, yeah, because that's really interesting. That point about the fact that you can't measure this right now, and that's why you know, obviously, maybe people on the outside will go, "Wow, well, yeah, it all sounds great." But where's the, where's the proof? As you said, like the proof comes when you when you try it uh, when you try it for yourself. So when you when you're working when you're doing your workshops, um, what are some of the initial kind of surprises you know that people have when they suddenly realize that there is that this energy does exist? How do they react? <laughs> Great question. They, they, it's a jaw-dropping experience. They, they, you know, without exception, people feel lighter in less than three minutes. Without exception. Mm. Suddenly, like a weight is off your shoulder. And I often give this uh, example to explain what's happening. It's like, you know, the body, mind, spirit again is like three states mm -hmm. of the same thing. For analogy, ice, body, water, mind, it flows all over the place, and steam, energy, spirit. When you have a steam jet applied on a block of ice, it just melts away. It's just that we don't know how to use that steam jet. We don't see it. We don't believe it. But when you get scalded, <laughs> that's that's the time. <laughs> you know, that's when you know. Yeah, yeah, we know steam. It's scientifically we know it. Like it condenses because water and all that. But with energy, you don't get scalded because that is a divine connection. That is part of consciousness. That's that's where the woo woo stuff starts coming in. But mm -hmm. it exists, and using that in less than three minutes, you feel lighter. You feel more relaxed, and that's that's why meditation works because you suddenly connect with. Universal energy, and 
once you start right. operating from that level of calmness then you're operating from a level where there is no stress you know the stress goes down when energy goes up when energy goes down yeah. stress goes up and that's how we say it you know my spirits are low i don't feel like doing anything i am stressed my yeah. spirits are high come on <laughs> off to work we go yeah. ho 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 yeah right. so yeah exactly exactly and uh, and i guess and and obviously like stress leads to burnout and 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 all sorts of other all sorts of other issues and i guess sandeep one of the interesting things is is today is that we live in such a strange world today because we're if we allow ourselves like we're bombarded by stuff on our phones and everything all the time we're getting messages we're almost i i always feel like we're discouraged from spending any time with ourselves right it's it's like no 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 here's a distraction here's a distraction so we're in a, we're in a kind of perpetual state right. of almost lacking any consciousness <laughs> right right and i mean that that's yeah. absolutely right as an observation is there a question to it or uh, if oh yes yeah, so you know the question is so how so yeah how what do we do about it but you 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 get to adopt renewal habits <laughs> you start with reading the book and understand that renewal works to renew yourself at the mind body spirit level bringing that alignment through small things that you do which is your body you say which is your mind and you be which is how you feel so bringing in say do be harmony that's something you can do in your bedroom and make a start or in your mm. cubicle or wherever you are and once you start getting into the cognition of a say to be harmony let's say or of the fact that you exist at three levels to begin with it's not just the body it's not just going to the gym it's not just the body and mind it's not about doing yoga which is joining the body and mind it's about the body mind and spirit which is where qigong and other energy practices come in and mm -hmm. if you start there that's uh, the beginning of uh, metamorphosis yeah and and it's a uh, no i think that's fascinating because i think one of the things that we don't pay enough attention to and we're all guilty of this is the inputs that go into our brains right you know i would say it's like you know you get up in the morning you you switch on your news and it doesn't matter where you are where you live on the political spectrum you find your news and it provokes a, a reaction in you it's not there to inform you anymore it's there to provoke some kind of reaction <laughs> or you get onto social media you get into comparison culture all of that. we're constantly feeding these inputs and i don't think we're paying any attention to them what do you think that is the sad part you know that is where that fancy word which is uh, getting adopted in corporate uh, lingo now which actually belongs to uh, the buddha 2500 years ago the word is mindfulness that's where that word comes from yeah you see so when we're talking about being uh, in cognition of these three levels we're talking about remembering that we do exist at these three levels and the word mindfulness is to define the word it's it's a misunderstood word it has nothing to do with the mind or the brain it has to do with mind in the sense of mind your head you know the board mind your head on a low ceiling what does that yeah. mean that means be mindful bring to mind that you have a head remember <laughs> that you have a head because if you remember you got a head you probably not knock into the ceiling <laughs> knock it into the yeah. ceiling right so remembering what we are doing who we are what is the question we are asking are we asking a question at all living mindfully which is then translated into moment to moment awareness because you remember every moment what it is that you are doing for god's sake and you realize because there's this built in system of uh, checks and balances auto control uh, auto correct uh, which brings us back to doing the right thing and so that's how consciousness goes up through mindfulness because consciousness is about keeping us human keeping us doing the right mm. thing stop being corrupt stop being uh, stressed stop being anything that does not serve your growth not only your growth but the growth of your community which is the supportive community that uh, is going to make mm. you happier healthier and harmonious forever Yeah. I I I love what you say about community because I often feel and and again I'm not saying I'm not guilty of this myself but we often get obsessed with 
these macro things going on in the world, like things that in reality we, you know, have have no impact or effect on or cannot. But we when we we talk a lot about them and we stress about them. Um, but we rather than do that, we would be better off like focusing on being like the best, you know, person, the best yeah. partner, the best parent, the best neighbor. All of those things, because as you said, that spreads out through community. Whereas if I can, where if I can sit down in front of my TV with a beer and like rant about all the things happening in the world, I'm not contributing it, right? I'm not making the world a better place myself. <laughs> Correct. So true. You can make the world better by what you do, and what you do is your habit. You know, the habit, incidentally, is mm -hmm. the first thing that you do about whatever you think. We think sixty thousand thoughts a day. But we don't do 60,000 things. We do six things or maybe 60 things at the most. What you do is what becomes a habit. So bringing that into place and knowing what is the right thing to do, which is where, you know, your uh, circles of control and influence come in. And which is where the serenity prayer comes in, which is what I'd uh, uh, like everybody to remember, to, to, to request divine energy to give us mm -hmm. the, the courage to accept what we can't control and the strength to mm -hmm. control what we can and the wisdom to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. And uh, just one last thing is that you mentioned the, uh, the, the mindfulness and yeah, it's, it's become kind of trendy and I, I yeah. feel like it's a little bit of a bumper sticker for some, you know, companies and people. And that's why I'm really grateful that you actually explained what mindfulness really is, because I've heard a lot of different uh, sort of definitions. Um, and I think at the end of the day, right, mindfulness is not a difficult thing really to practice. We just have to put our focus there as opposed to let our focus be dissipated across all this other nonsense. Am I am I right? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And you do that in little steps. It's like how you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. So you start mm -hmm. getting mindful of your breaths to begin with, because that's something that stays with you. Incidentally, if you haven't noticed, the day you stop breathing, the moment you stop breathing, that's the end of you. So, <laughs> so just just getting mindful, just remembering, hey, I'm breathing, keeps you a lot healthier. Suddenly, your cells start getting more oxygenated, and you know that that's a panacea, really. So that's there. <laughs> yeah, because isn't it isn't it funny isn't it funny though, uh, Sadeep, you talk to talk about breathing, isn't it? Sometimes when we're really stressed or we're doing something or maybe an exercise, you're really stressed out, and somebody goes, "Don't forget to breathe,", breathe. and then you yes, realize breathe. you're not breathing because you're so focused on whatever you're doing that you're not even that you've forgotten to breathe. Forgotten to breathe. So, getting into habits is the start of. Um, it starts with. Uh, being mindful of your breath for example because then that gets you into a habit that you can uh, uh, translate into other areas you can be mindful about other things and that's when you start developing mindfulness as a habit itself yeah well listen sandeep this has been fantastic i'm so glad we had this conversation all of sandeep's you information great questions gonna... john thank you <laughs> it <was such> a <laughs> pleasure thank you <laughs> All of Sandeep's information will be below this video. But before we go, Sandeep, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. So I'm the founder of Renewalism. And uh, I call it Renewalism because uh, I'm uh, expecting that to be a movement in this decade. That's what I've dedicated the next 10 years to. And uh, this comes from the book Renewal, which is available at every leading online portal. And it's about raising human consciousness. And just a, a last word about uh, consciousness here is mm -hmm. that we have in the last decade experienced this with veganism. What is that? A small change in our habits and lifestyle because we were operating at a higher consciousness about animal exploitation and survival. Now, I'm just going to change that word animal to human. Change of lifestyle and habits because you're operating at a higher level of consciousness about human survival and sustainability you know yeah. our own exploitation which is what was bothering me so long back so what i do now is uh, help organizations uh, understand how people purpose process are linked to body mind and spirit how they come in order and how they increase productivity engagement and reduce absenteeism and sickness because every every person who works with you is capable of self-renewal 
and then we can have symbiotic renewal and renewal and uh, that's what's going to change uh, things hugely in the way we run our lives and businesses in this decade. Yeah, absolutely. Love it, Sandeep. Listen, thank you so much for, for sharing all your insights today. As I said, all of Sandeep's information will be below here, and I would uh, encourage you to go check it out. Uh, let's face it, uh, it's probably the right probably well overdue that we start addressing this uh, addiction to stress and find a little more peace and harmony in our lives and then hopefully that can permeate out to the world and we can be part of the solution and not the problem awesome. all right well listen thanks again sandeep thank you for watching and listening i'll see you all again soon thank you all